Hello, my name is Christy Holsauser, and I want to thank you today for joining me to discuss cardiovascular assessment basics of EKGs. Today in our lecture, we're going to talk about a little bit about cardiovascular assessment. Um, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the heart. Um, we're also going to discuss some of the electrical conductivity of the heart, and then look at um, how to interpret each of the individual components that um, make up the basic EKG that we have um, on our monitors in the hospital. So as we look and talk about the anatomy of the heart, um, we understand that for our body, the heart is the main pump that moves the blood through the body. And to do that, the blood goes through various um, chambers, atrias, through different valves, um, different vessels of the heart uh, to get to the lungs, then back to the heart and out to the body. So we're going to talk a little bit about each of those parts of the anatomy. First, we're going to talk about the layers of the heart. Um, the epicardium is the outer surface of the heart. And if you see in our picture, um, you'll see the section of the heart that's been pulled out and enlarged to give you a better understanding. Um, the epicardium is the outer surface um, of the heart. The myocardium is the inner layer, the middle layer, um, specifically the muscle layer. The beginning of the word myo always refers to muscle. And then the most um, inner layer of the heart is the endocardium. And that's the very inside of the heart that the blood comes in contact with um, inside of the heart. Now, um, in future um, presentations, we'll talk about inflammatory processes and uh, different things that cause infection in the body. And you'll always note that the end of the word itis usually refers to um, inflammation or infection. So in looking at these words, if we're talking about epicarditis, then that means we have an infection in the outer surface of the heart. Um, endocarditis is an infection in the inner layer of the heart. And um, as we look further at the heart, we're going to also talk about the pericardium. Now, the pericardium is the encasement of the heart. Um, as you see on the slide, it is the, the surrounding layer of the heart, the, the part that um, covers the heart. Um, it is made up of two spaces, or two layers, and those two layers have a space in between. The first is the parietal, or the outer membrane. It is the very outside layer uh, on the heart. The second is the visceral. This is a thin inner layer that adheres to the heart on the inside. And then the space in between is called the pericardial space. And as you see um, in the picture, you have the thin space that comes in between here, uh, between the parietal and the visceral layers. That space can hold approximately 5 to 20 milliliters of fluid. Now, um, again, talking about infection, if you have an injury to the heart that um, causes damage or bleeding, any trauma to those spaces, we can have what's called pericarditis if there's an inflammation between those two layers um, of the surrounding of the heart. And next, we're going to talk about the heart chambers. Um, the heart chambers, there are four of them. Um, the first is uh, the right atrium. Um, it is in the top right side of the heart. The second is the right ventricle. The third, we'll talk about the left atrium. And then the fourth, the left ventricle. Um, so as you see, the heart um, can think of it as uh, four different rooms or four different um, chambers of the heart, the two upper layers are called the atrias, and the two lower are called the ventricles. Um, dividing those uh, chambers or uh, the atrias and the ventricles, and then even um, being able to get blood out through the vessels of the heart, um, we'll talk about the four valves of the heart. Um, there are atrioventricular valves. These are valves that are dividing the atria from the ventricles. There are two of them. Um, the first is the tricuspid valve. As you see here in the picture, it divides the right atrium um, from the right ventricle. The second atrioventricular valve is the mitral valve, and it divides the left atrium and the left ventricle. There are also semilunar valves. Your semilunar valves are the valves that, can, that are at the beginning of the vessels that go off of the heart. Um, we have our pulmonary artery. That is the vessel that takes blood from the right ventricle to the lungs, and the valve that is there is the pulmonary valve. Um, the second semilunar valve 
is the aortic valve. This is the valve that takes the blood. The blood goes through the left ventricle, through the aortic valve, out the aorta, and to the body. In looking at the valves, the um, tricuspid valve, as you can see in the picture, is a tri-leaflet valve. It has three different leaflets that are involved. And then our mitral valve is a bicuspid valve. It has two leaflets um, that are involved in the makeup of that valve. Um, your semilunar valves, again, which are the uh, pulmonary valve and the aortic valve, they help to keep blood from coming back into the ventricle after they have closed. They open during ventricular contraction and they close during relaxation. Now that we've talked about the different anatomy of the heart, um, the different chambers, the different valves that are involved in the heart, let's look a little bit at the blood flow through the heart. Now this slide is a little wordy, um, but it's there with intent. And the next slide we'll actually look at a picture of the heart and talk through the blood flow. Um, but let's just look through um, the words here on this screen. First of all, the blood comes from the body. It can come, comes from the lower part of the body, it also comes from the upper part of the body, from your arms and your head. And it will flow first through either the inferior vena cava, which is the vessel that brings the blood from the lower part of the body. Um, and it will also come from the superior vena cava. That is the vessel that brings the blood from your arms, from your head, and from the upper part of your body. The blood then goes into the right atrium through the, right, through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, the blood goes through the pulmonary valve, through the pulmonary artery, and out to the lungs. <clears throat> From the lungs, the blood then comes through four pulmonary veins, through to the left atrium, through the mitral valve, down to the left ventricle, through the aortic valve, and then out the aorta and out to the body. So let's look at the picture here on the slide. So we first of all, we have our inferior vena cava that is bringing the blood from the lower part of the body. We also have our superior vena cava, which is bringing blood from the upper part of the body. Blood from both of those come into the right atrium. This is the first room or the first chamber that we talk about of the heart. From the right atrium, blood is going to go through our tricuspid or our trileaflet valve. It's going to go into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, blood is going to come up through the pulmonary valve and into the pulmonary artery and then out to the lungs. We'll go to both lungs of the body. Um, the blood then will pick up oxygen. As you see in the picture, the right side of the heart now is blue. That's because there's not as much oxygen in that part of the heart as the blood comes back to the body. The body has already extracted or taken away um, the oxygen that it needs, so we talk about the blood coming back to the right side of the heart as the blue blood. Um, as that blood goes through the right ventricle, out the pulmonary artery, into the lungs, it will pick up the oxygen that it needs to support the body. So the blood will come from the lungs back into the pulmonary veins, and you have four pulmonary veins, two from each lung, and that blood will then go into the left atrium. Now you see that that blood on the left side of the heart is red, or, or what we consider oxygenated. It's picked up the oxygen that it needs. So it's going to come into the left atrium, through the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve, into the left ventricle. It's gonna go out the aortic valve, through the aorta, and then the aorta takes the blood out to all the parts of the body. So that is a quick overview of the blood flow through the heart, how it comes to the heart, and then how it gets back out to the body. Next, we're gonna discuss some of the electrical conductivity of the heart. Um, our heart would not work without electricity. Um, and it's not, not like the electricity that we have from the wall. It's not that strong of an electricity, but it does need um, the impulses or the electrical conductivity to make the different muscle parts of the heart work. Um, electrical impulses that move through the heart make the heart cells contract or makes them squeeze. This starts that heartbeat and makes the heart pump blood to the body. As you see in our picture, um, there are different um, 
objects or uh, different areas of the heart that are listed. Um, there are four to five different components to the electrical conductivity. The first that we're going to talk about is our SA node. It is, it is located in the upper part of the right atrium. The SA stands for sinoatrial node. Um, we call it the pacemaker of the heart. It determines the rate of the heart, um, <clears throat> but also keep in mind if the SA node becomes sick for whatever reason or becomes injured, then the other parts of the heart can pick up the rate and uh, be able to control the, um, the pumping activity and the rate of the heart, it would just be at a lower rate, and we'll discuss that. Um, the SA node, again, the pacemaker of the heart, it will keep your heart beating about 60 to 100 beats per minute. It is located, again, um, in the upper part of the right atrium, and it starts the impulse through the heart. The impulse travels from the SA node down to the AV node. The AV node is the atrioventricular node. Now again, if the SA node fails, this AV node can take over the pacemaker activity of the heart. If it does that, the heart will then beat at a rate of about 40 to 60 beats per minute. Um, the AV node is located in the base of the right atrium, close to the septum. It is there because it is then going to pass impulses down through the septum to control the ventricles of the heart. The impulse from the SA node, once it comes into the AV node, it will pause um, before it passes the electrical conductivity down into the ventricles. And we'll see that reflected when we look at the EKG strip. Um, this pause is needed so that the atria can fully contract before the ventricles contract. We're going to look a little bit about how the electrical charge is made in the cell. If you look at our screen, um, it shows you a graph of um, potassium, sodium, calcium, um, all the components that are needed to cause the cell to have um, a contraction and a relaxation process. Um, the process of the cardiac muscle contraction does occur at the cellular level. Um, when the cardiac cell is at rest, we say that it is polarized. And inside the cell, there is an increased concentration of potassium and a decreased concentration of sodium that gives the cell a negative charge. Outside the cell, there is a decreased concentration of potassium and an increased concentration in sodium, which causes the outside of the cell to have a positive charge. Now, when the cell is stimulated by an electrical impulse, the membrane of the cell changes, and this allows sodium to come into the cell. Um, with sodium follows calcium. So the cell membrane changes because of the electrical impulse, allows sodium into the cell, and calcium follows sodium into the cell, and the muscle contraction begins. So when the cell is stimulated, and the ions begin to change, the sodium comes in, the calcium follows, that causes the inside of the cell to become a positive charge, and the outside of the cell becomes a negative charge. The last step of the electrical conduction is called repolarization. And repolarization is when the balance is returned to its normal polarized state. So sodium and calcium leave the cell, they are pumped back out of the cell, and the cell goes back to its resting or what we call polarized state. Again, if you look to the side of the screen, you'll see again this process would start over. You would have an increase in potassium, a decrease in sodium, and the cell again has a negative or a resting polarized state. So when we look at the conductivity through the heart, we've talked about um, two of the components that cause or that carry the electrical conduction through the heart. Um, with this screen, let's look at the final two components that make up the pathway of the electrical conductivity. Um, and the third, we talked about the SA node 
in the upper right atrium. We talked about the AV node that's located in the lower part close to the septum. The third is what we call the bundle of Hiss. The bundle of Hiss are the branches that come down through the septum. In the picture you can see there is a right bundle and there is a left bundle. That is important to remember when in later modules we talk about heart block. If you have a uh, block or an obstruction of the electrical conductivity down through any of the parts of the pathway, we call that a heart block. So if our impulse comes from our SA node down to our AV node and comes down into the bundle of Hiss, but it only goes to the left, then we would say that we have a right bundle branch block or vice versa. If there's an obstruction on the left side and the impulse only comes down to the right, then we have what's called a left bundle branch. So the impulse is carried from the AV node down the septum through the bundle of Hiss, and then from the bundle of Hiss goes out to the, what we call the Purkinje fibers. These are the little fibers that affect the rest uh, or all of the components of the ventricle to give it the squeeze that it needs. So when the impulse comes from the SA node down to the AV node, the atriums are squeezing. The, the impulse will pause at the AV node, allowing the atria to completely contract before it sends the impulse down through the septum, through the bundle of Hiss into the Purkinje fibers, which then cause the ventricles to contract. In our slide here, we see that the pathway through the heart is then interpreted through our EKG strip. So if you look at our waveform here, our colors will correspond with the electrical pathway that's going through the heart. Our SA node, as you see here, is indicated green. In our EKG, that is reflected in our P wave. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the explanation of all these in future, in future slides to come. The AV node receives its impulse from the SA node. It will pause. The pause is our red line here. That is called our PR interval. And you can see on the slide it says that is where the AV node pauses. And then after the pause, the impulse continues down through the ventricles. And as it goes down through the ventricles, we'll see the reflection on the EKG of what is called our Q R S complex. That's the ventricular squeeze that's occurring during the electrical conduction. And then the last part is the relaxation. So after the ventricles squeeze, the cells will go back to a polarized state <clears throat> and we will have ventricular relaxation, which is indicated here, um, out to our, um, to what we call our T wave. So let's review just a little bit of this slide. Um, our SA node, the impulse begins here, comes down to our AV node, through our AV node, down the bundle of Hiss, and then into the Purkinje fibers. And again, we'll talk about how we see that reflected in our EKG strip. Um, one thing that I'd like to review, um, the SA node, remember, is the uh, pacemaker of the heart. It helps to generate the, uh, the rate that the heart will have. <clears throat> the SA node can generate a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. If the SA node fails, the AV node can take over and it can generate um, a rate of about 40 to 60 beats per minute. If the AV node becomes sick, the Purkinje fibers can generate a rate, but that rate's going to only be about 20 to 40 beats per minute, um, which is not going to be a, uh, a good or a strong enough um, impulse contraction to provide good blood flow out to the heart. So if our heart is very sick, that rate is not going to be enough um, to help support us. Mm -hmm.